Hi guys, I'm Ed Hitchcock, the owner of Taylor Tackle, and today we're out on Devil's Lake, North Dakota with Tim Van Zeelen, and he's got a big group um, out here, a pro staffer, Chris from his Jiffy team, and a bunch of Chris's friends, and we're going to be tar targeting walleye. There we go. Got him. Got him. Oh, that's a nice fish. stuck on a branch down there. We're fishing in a very wooded area. Oh, there we go. 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 Ooh. Ah, nice little 18, 16 inch eater walleye. Oh, that's great. I love that. This would be table fare if I wasn't traveling. Nice little walleye there. We're gonna get him back in. Beautiful fish. Just really cool. Really nice eater fish. There he goes. Kicking right off. That's what we like to do. Oh, that's fun. Let's get another one. Yes, I can. It's a nice one. Yeah, it is a nice one. Fish on. Oh yeah. Nice eater. That came out of nowhere. No. Nice. Pretty one. We could probably, uh, that's borderline. Good. Yep. That is the little bee. <laughs> I had to drop it right down to where my jig matched his line, and that's why I never saw him come up. He just woofed it. Let's talk some walleye jigging tactics. I'm here in 27 feet of water and I'm gonna primarily be catching fish in between six inches off the bottom and two feet off the bottom. Now the bigger fish will come up to two feet, but the smaller fish, you know, the ones under 18 are typically gonna bite within that one foot distance. And what I'm doing is I'm letting the lure drop all the way down to the bottom and then I'm slowly gonna work it up a little bit. I'm just gonna see what's going on. That's gonna poof the bottom and I'm just gonna do nice lifts, maybe like four to five inch lifts. And I'm not doing anything really erratic. I like to do that just kind of swimming motion. I'm using a jigging lure and I'm just swimming it just like this, right? And if I don't mark any fish right away, because if I did something big, it would spook it if I was right on top of a fish. So that's why I'm doing this right when I drop down. And then if there's no fish around, right, I'm gonna try to call in some fish. And so then I'm gonna do bigger swoops, maybe a couple feet up, swoop it up and let it drop down swoop it up and let it drop down. And then I'm gonna let it get down to about six inches off the bottom and I'm gonna just rattle it a little bit. And then I'm gonna pause. Now the pause is what's gonna usually lead to the bite. That pause allows the walleye to surface up to what you were doing and jump on that bait. So let's say I start marking a fish, right? I'm gonna work it up a little bit, but not too much, right? When you see us do like perch and especially like lake trout and things like that, we're getting big like three to four inch, or sorry, three to four feet of distance to pull them off the bottom and get them to commit. Walleye aren't gonna go that far up and that's gonna kind of spook them away. And so you, when you get a fish on the flasher, you wanna work them up a foot or two, but then you gotta kind of stop, depending on the bite. Sometimes they'll go way up there, but the majority of the time you wanna stop after you lead them up and then you pause. If they don't hit right away, just pause a little bit longer and then just wiggle it in place right above their nose. Maybe move it up a little bit more, keep wiggling and then pause. Usually that gets them going. If it's a really light bite, what I like to do is after I call in some fish, I'm just gonna leave it still. Sometimes that's what you gotta do, right? Um, another thing to do with a really flat bite like that is after you leave it still and they're still not committing, just move it up like an inch or two slowly lifting it up, and sometimes that'll trigger it. Mike Cleveland is an awesome walleye angler. He's part of the crew that came up from the Twin Cities with us. 
and he's helping us out today. Um, and he's just got some awesome, valuable information to share with us as well. I'm trying to get as many guys from our crew over here to come and give you guys pointers that maybe I've missed throughout the episode. And so, Mike, is there anything that you want to share with the with the viewers back home? Sure. Yeah, a couple things. Um, one thing, we, we were out here kind of bopping around this morning and uh, trying to target these walleyes and everything. And one thing that you can't be afraid of is to try something different, switch things up. You know, you, you might have... Be grabbing your tackle box here you see a spoon that you want to try that's not working one good thing I saw in, in these tackle boxes you're providing is uh, the clips so you don't have to cold fingers whatever the case may be you're not having to retie your line and everything you've provided these clips so you can just take a spoon off put a jig jig head on whatever the case is and hopefully find that that pattern that works for these walleyes um, another thing I want to talk about is clothing selection and, and having the appropriate footwear and all that. <laughs> we know that when, one. <laughs> yeah, when, when you're out here, it's it, it's windy, whatever the case is, you don't want cold feet, you don't want, if you're walking in slush, that sort of thing, you don't want that stuff seeping through your shoes, your boots. Um, you need to stay warm. It's going to help you be more comfortable, which is going to help you last longer on the ice. So get good gear get good clothing layer up and everything you can always shed layers if the sun comes out and the wind dies down but you want you want to be dry you don't want to be sweating so you want to be able to lose layers quick and then add them once that wind comes up or the temperatures dip at night so the the more comfortable more comfortable you are on the ice the longer you'll be able to be out here and rip the lips and all that so what cam's been bugging me about is oh, this is something that i do that's really dumb and you guys should not do it um, is I take my gloves off and I just throw them down when I'm running around and stuff like that. Just throw them right here on the inside of your bibs because it keeps them nice and warm and it keeps them dry and it also adds a little bit of a layer to you. It's the greatest thing. It's just like little things like that that you don't even think about mm -hmm. that somebody just points out and you're like, oh yeah, that'd be smart, wouldn't it be? And they don't blow away in the wind. They then. don't blow you, you away. You know where they are when it's time to pick up. They don't fall in your so, hole. Yeah. But yeah. that's another thing too with like gloves um, is you know, we'd like to fish without gloves. Sometimes it gets really cold, but it is kind of important to try to get them off before you get that fish catch, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, look online, there's hundreds of fingerless gloves if you want to go that route. Wool gloves are always a good, because yeah. even if they get wet, they'll retain some uh, some um, insulation properties and all that, but. Yeah, it's important to take those gloves off and you'll see me, I know, I, I don't get them off all the time on time. We're, we're focusing on a lot of stuff. We got cameras all over the place. We're trying to get the right angle, um, but it's really important if you're if you're focused on fishing at the time to take your gloves off and, and, and reel in the fish when you start marking a fish because if you leave your big gloves on, you're gonna get tangled up in your line. You're gonna slip on your thumb and you're gonna lose that tension with your line. It'll, it'll go slack and all of a sudden you'll lose a fish, which I've exactly. lost multiple times trying to keep my mitts on while reeling up. All right, we're gonna go over all the walleye lures and baits that we're using out here on Devil's Lake and just what you should be using everywhere for catching walleye, right? And we've got a whole arsenal that comes out of our tailored tackle ice fishing kit. A lot of these lures can transition to different species, but they're primarily designed for walleye. And so we're gonna go down the list of what we're using on our dead sticks as well as what we're using on our jigging sticks from morning, midday bite to late night bite. So let's get started. When we have low light periods in those transitions between dawn and dusk, right? That's the prime walleye bite. We are going to be hunkered down in a prime spot after we found one during midday or the day before. So in that case, we are going to have a dead stick in our hole next to our jigging and we like to use these bright green and glow colors. And so on our dead stick, we're gonna have a bright green glow uh, jig here. We call it a demon jig. And that's gonna have a live minnow on it. Now you can hook it two ways. You can either go through the front of its mouth if you're going to be intermittently jigging your dead stick. Uh, you just put it right here through the head, just like that and that allows it to stay um, kind of like streamlined through the water while you're jigging up and down, wiggle its tail loosely on the bottom. Now, if you're just gonna leave it still, you're gonna wanna go through the tail so that that minnow is consistently struggling and working the spoon back and forth with its tail while it's doing so. Let me just flip my minnow around real quick. We're just gonna go right back through the tail. Now, this is the same rule as we're gonna do over here with that slip bobber, uh, but this is what we're sitting. Uh, with at night and early morning, that's gonna be in your hole about one to two feet off the bottom. 
and he's just gonna be struggling there the whole time. Now at the same time, while we have this dead stick down in these low light periods, we really like to use our jigging lure. And this is in that fire tiger, so it's nice and bright. And we are going to tip this with a minnow head. And what we do to tip it with a minnow head, I know this sounds strange to a lot of you guys, um, but minnow heads on your lures are much more effective than a full minnow. So we're gonna put this minnow on the lure head first. We're not gonna go through the lips like we would typically do with live bait to keep them alive. We're gonna go right through the skull so it stays on. And while we have it here, struggling around, we're just gonna go right below the gills and pinch and pull that body off. And then there's just gonna be a head left. Keep the tail. If you run low on bait, you can use that. But we're tipping it with a minnow head because if you have the full minnow, it's gonna make your jigging and your lure move all wonky. It's just too much going on. You just need a little bit of minnow on there to provide a strike target for that walleye and to send some scent off into the water. Cause we're gonna be jigging, the walleye's gonna come up and then we're gonna pause and it's gonna make that decision whether it's gonna strike or it's gonna go away. The minnow head is what's going to seal the deal. Now when we're going midday and I'm bouncing around, my absolute favorite is our finesse flutter spoon. This flutter spoon has a little snap on top. The snaps come in the kit as well. You just tie it on and that allows that spoon to flutter down and reflect light. I'm using this especially when I'm in my shack on really cold days, um, but it's in the mid middle of the day when the sun's out. This is gonna flutter down and reflect the light and it's gonna call in fish. So we're gonna swoop it up, let it flutter down and call in light. When I'm hole hopping, fishing fast, I don't have time to change these minnow heads out over and over and over again. Um, what and, and the bite's hot. I like to use a rattling minnow and this thing just absolutely shakes. It's got a bunch of BBs in there and it's gonna go, just gonna flutter through the water up and down. It's great at calling fish in, finding fish and fishing really fast. So you don't have to tip this with anything. You'll see us tip it sometimes if the bite's slow but we still wanna call in fish but you can fish this thing as is. Now in the middle of the day when we are fishing um, and we find a good spot and we wanna put a dead stick down, instead of using just the jig with a live minnow, we like to use a slip float because we can put this a little bit further away from us. We can spread out a little bit more. It doesn't have to be right next to us, it can be, but we like to spread it out and this slip float, we just have a regular slip rig, weight, uh, a snap, and then a leader to a number six octopus red hook. All of this is in the kit. We set this up and we can move it maybe a couple feet or maybe you know 10 yards away from our fishing location wherever we're set up and this will allow us to keep that live bait going down there without getting the line frozen to the ice. These, these uh, slip bobbers do a good job of breaking up the ice and keeping your line straight so even if it does freeze up a little bit you can still reel your line up and have another person chisel through the ice a little bit, break it open without having that line stuck there. Um, so it's just easy um, and you can go and you can walk around and you can just check if the bobber's gone at all. You just leave your bail open, let it run through, and if that slip bobber's not in the hole anymore, you know you got a fish. All right, so Tim and I are gonna show you uh, how to get these holes set up for walleye fishing. What you really have to focus on with walleye is staying mobile and targeting a lot of different holes. Now, walleye are gonna be spread out. Here in Devil's Lake, they are gonna be roaming in schools, but a lot of times they're just in pods of two to three and you gotta find the fish. So when you're getting set up, you wanna do at least 15 to 20 holes in whatever area you're fishing. Right now, we're in 10 feet of water, right off of an, a submerged road, and we're gonna be going up and down the side of this road in a zigzag pattern covering small transitions in depth and transitions in that bottom structure. So the part where the road is on, the part where the road is kind of going off, and then the dip in the ditch there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zigzag out and we're gonna spread out probably 10 to 15 yards between each hole. That's gonna allow us to really target this area. We're fishing with another five anglers, and so we wanna get enough holes out here so that everybody can be moving around and hopping holes. We're gonna fish each hole for about five to 10 minutes, and then we're gonna move on to the next one. If we start marking fish, then we're gonna set up our flip over shelters and just hone in on whatever's going on down there. And if the bite slows down or the fish aren't feeding hard, we're gonna keep moving. And so super important, you gotta drill a lot of holes. And to do that, it's gonna be really hard to do that with a hand auger. And so this is when the power augers come into play. And so Tim, you wanna tell me a little bit about these ones? Well, we have our E6 Lightning. Uh, the E6 Lightning is a 40 uh, volt, six amp battery powered auger. So this allows you to drill that many holes. It's gonna let you drill in, we're in about 20 inches of ice. We're gonna be able to drill about 100 holes per auger. So that'll 
really get us enough holes. It'll allow us to dr drill the pattern that we need. Now, we're actually using two different types. You're using the 15 to one gear ratio geared for the eight inch auger. I have the 24 to one gearbox. It's a little slower, but more torquey. So once you get into a thicker ice, the torqueier drill allows us to drill a smoother hole without that uh, hang up. When you get to the slushy ice at the bottom of the, right before the, the final freeze, you'll notice a lot of augers start to bog down in that last two inches because it's harder for it to, to clear that hole. Yeah. So that's why we have two different types and we're gonna see which one works best on uh, Devil's Lake. And what I love about these is they're kind of a middle ground, right? And so you got the really, really light drills, right? This ice is gonna be way too thick, right? And then you got the bigger gas powered ones, which are great when you get two feet, but those are tough to lug around. These are just right in the middle here where they're light enough where we can just bop around and walk around, no problem. But they're heavy duty enough to really get through this kind of, what are we in, 17 inches of ice now? 17 to 20, yep. 17 to 20, so these are gonna be perfect for that. Nice fish, Tim. Caught a fish. There we go. Throw them to fight another day. All right, so when you find a good spot or you want to hunker down for the night and you're setting up your maybe your flip over shelter or a pop up shelter, what you want to do is set up at least three holes if you have space for it. We're going to have three holes and the reason for that is we're going to have one hole that's going to hold our transducer right from our flasher and that's going to pick up both holes to the side. It's a lot easier to land fish, especially big ones, if you don't have to pull that transducer cord out of the water. And so we're gonna have that in the middle. Then on one side, we're gonna be jigging, actively jigging. And then on the other side, we're gonna have a dead stick. And this is a two pole approach that allows you to call in fish with your lure because you're gonna be sedentary. You wanna get these fish to come in and check your baits out. And then you're gonna have that dead stick there just in case you call a fish in, it comes in, it's not interested in your actively jigged lure and it's more interested in maybe you know a served up meal and that dead stick is often going to have a jig or a bear hook with a live minnow whether that's going to be a shiner or a crappie minnow we're in north dakota so we're going to be using a crappie minnow on that and this two pull approach works really well for our for all sorts of species you can do it with perch um you can do it with lake trout you can do it with all sorts of things and so we're going to get this set up and then we're going to show you what it looks like All right, great, so now we have our three holes set up. We've got our flasher right in the middle hole and this cone will be able to pick up both of these holes because I'm in about 13 feet of water. If you get to about like five or six feet of water, you're not gonna be able to pick up side to side because it's a cone, but anything over 10 feet of water, you're gonna be able to pick up both holes. Now I got my dead stick here with a live minnow. It's got a demon jig with a live crappie minnow. And we're just gonna let this one go all the way down. We're gonna set it about a foot off the bottom because that's typically the walleye strike zone. And we're gonna be jigging anywhere between six inches off the bottom and two feet off the bottom. So we're gonna be pulling in fish to that range. And this dead stick is gonna sit right here completely still in this rod holder I have roughly one foot off the bottom. So I'm gonna take my jigging lure and it's gonna be our finesse spoon here and we got low light period. We're gonna be pulling fish in. There's a little bit of light. This is gonna reflect that. It's gonna flutter down because I put this little snap swivel on top of it. And we're gonna drop this down. It's gonna take a while to get down because it's fluttering light. 
Man. We're gonna get right down next to the dead stick. Now, once it hits bottom, I'm gonna work it up a bit. I'm gonna wait because it's gonna flutter left and right outside of the hole, so I'm gonna wait till it comes back in. This is tipped with a minnow head. That's just to get that scent there, so when they come in, they've got something to target and key in on, but it's not a full minnow, because if I throw the full minnow on, it's gonna kind of mess with the presentation a bit. So I'm gonna drop this down, and I'm gonna start doing like longer swoops, where I'm gonna pull it up and let it flutter all the way down pull it up and let it flutter all the way down. Then when I get to that area where that dead stick is, I'm just gonna work my lure up and down a bit. And this is just gonna twitch it, reflect light, flip the head around a little bit. And it's gonna entice any of those walleye that are sitting there on the bottom to come up and check it out. When I do get a fish on the screen, I'm gonna keep a close eye on my dead stick and on my flasher. I'm gonna keep focusing on my jigging rod and I'm gonna be working that fish up and trying to get it to commit but I'm keeping a close eye on my dead stick because you're not gonna be able to tell with your flasher because it's two dimensional, right? You're not gonna be able to tell whether that fish is going for your dead stick or if it's going for your jigging lure. So keeping a close eye on that rod tip, but still working and anticipating a bite on your jigging lure. Now I have to put some gloves on because my fingers are very cold. So I'm out here with Luke Nelson, who is an awesome walleye angler from the Twin Cities, and he came up to Devil's Lake with us to help us film this show. He's got a couple great shots today. Um, and I was just gonna pick his brain about some beginner tips that he has for folks out there watching. And what would you say are like the top three things that you would pass on to a new walleye angler on the ice? Well, I mean, there's a few, there's so many, and that's why you gotta keep watching some of these videos and, and just keep doing your research. But if I were to narrow it down to three, you know, one thing that is really important for me is watching that rod bend when you do get hooked up. I know when I first started ice fishing, you know, you got a short rod, you know, I'd, I'd get them fighting up and then sometimes they'd pop off. And what I was doing is I'm looking down at the hole, waiting for that fish to come up the hole. Well, you set that hook, you gotta be watching your rod because if that rod starts to unload and straighten up, that thing's gonna bounce off. So if that rod starts to come up, you gotta bring your hand up with it and keep tension on that until you can reel down and keep doing the same thing because you don't want your rod coming straight back up. Yeah, it's keeping that line taut, which is right. like an odd thing to do, especially when you're in a sheltered area or you're on your knees or something. And yeah. so really focusing on your rod tip versus just looking at the hole or looking at the flasher or getting excited. Yep. And I don't even realize I'm doing it, but when you are changing your depth, you know, make sure you're closing your bail and pulling it tight instead of just snapping that thing forward. Um, one thing too, especially for, for starting out, if you don't have one of these flashers, which is really important, um, one thing I really enjoyed doing, dropping that bait all the way to the bottom to your slack, then just reeling down to your ice and coming up. And now you know however far away your rod tip is from the top of the water, that's where your bait's at in the water. And you can just kind of picture what it's doing down there with however high up it is without having a flasher. You might not see that fish coming, but you'll know exactly where your bait's at. And if you do get a fish on, try to take a mental note of what you're doing. What was that jigging cadence? What was the weather like? Is it cloudy? Is it sunny? Um, time of day? All that stuff, especially if you're fishing the same type of water, the same bodies of water, that's going to really pay dividends in the future. Yeah, I think keeping track of that stuff is super important for sharing information too because you're gonna get a lot of people out on the ice that are fishing and they're figuring things out. And what you wanna do is you do wanna share information and people are mostly friendly. And so a great part of the sport is coming up to somebody and saying, hey, this is what's working for me, what's working for you? Cause you're not gonna be a very popular angler on the lake if you just come up and say, hey, what are you guys doing? What's working? If you come up and you say, hey, I've got you know three fish in this area, I know what depth it was, I know how high in the water column they were biting, I know what lure I was using and stuff. That's gonna be super valuable information to share with them and then they're gonna let you in on what's working for them and you can start accumulating a bank of walleye resources while you're out here on the water, especially fishing new water. Absolutely. Always wanted to help each other out and, and ice fishermen are really great at that, so. Cam. There we go. There's a nice eater walleye. Oh, 
That's fun. There we go. That's gonna make it onto the dinner table. Just like that. He came charging up there. He was just flying. There we go. Yum. Hey Cam, got a nice eater. There we go. Got number two. Hoo hoo, hot hole. Oh, this guy's a little too small. We're gonna get him back in there. But still, fun, a lot of fun. That's aggressive, Mr. Walleye. Yeah, come fish these holes that we drilled. It's a little chilly out. A little nippy going over that pass. I gotta go get another minnow head. Cool, moving in then. Follow me up pretty high here, there's two of them. Really? Yep. How high up? Uh, well, two feet. The one's hanging way back, but the one is right under me. Got him. There you go, nice. There you go. That's a good table there. Little well eye. Yeah, there's there was two because the other one's back on the bottom. Maybe he'll make the 20 yard migration. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that one. That's a 12er. Need to get him back. Yeah. Got a nice little shot. If you can see it. <laughs> There we go, that's a nice walleye. That is a beautiful walleye. What a beautiful fish! <laughs> that was on a full minnow on our demon jig. Cam lit it up perfectly on the light. You just take this here and you just shine it on the light right there. Works every time when we're out here at night. Just a beautiful fish. Let's get some more. I saved him. At the cost of getting a full treble hook in my finger, I saved the walleye. Now, we're going to deal with that. Because that is not fun. This is going to be extremely painful. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take the coat off my dude. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That is a nice walleye. Oh man. I gotta put this down because I'm marking. I got you. I have one on. Switch with me. Oh no, we're, no, we missed it. <laughs>